These are the typical shapes we use to illustrate dimensions 0 through 3. A point, a line, a square, and a cube respectively. We begin with a point and travel a specific distance in one direction to get a line in one dimension. We then turn 90 degrees and travel that same distance to get a square in two dimensions. Next, we turn 90 degrees again to obtain a cube in three dimensions, and theoretically, we can turn another 90 degrees to form a tesseract in four dimensions, and so on. In traditional measurement, unlike dimensional measurement, we don't think too much about each shape having a boundary of one dimension less, that a line has a boundary of two points, or that a square has a boundary of four lines, or that a cube has a boundary of six planes, or that a tesseract has a boundary of eight cubes. As we learned in episode 11, the pointal barrier would have us believe that a point does not even have a boundary. This would be completely contrary to what we already know about dimensional measurement using spheres instead of squares. It's been clearly shown that each dimension not only has its own shape, but each shape has its own boundary of one dimension less. If we modify this slide from episode 9, we can show the traditional measurement as squares. The solid orange squares represent the objects and the hollow purple squares represent their boundary of one dimension less. Our understanding of these relationships seems to end at dimension zero, where there appears to be no boundary for a point. This difficulty arises from our perception of a point being a location instead of an object. Each shape in traditional measurement, a line, a square, a cube, etc., has a direct ratio relationship with the volume of a ball in the associated dimension. And each boundary in traditional measurement also has that same ratio relationship with the surface of a sphere in the associated dimension. If we start with a length of one anything, an inch, a mile, a light year, etc., we get the following table for traditional measurement. Note that the value for each dimension is one, a positive number, and is simply one raised to the exponent of the dimension name. Dimension one is one raised to the power of one. Dimension two is one raised to the power of two, etc. What's important to note here is that even though the value of each dimension equals one, the dimensional values are not equal because they are different units. For instance, one lineal inch does not equal one square inch or one cubic inch. The same as 10 lineal inches do not equal 10 square inches or 10 cubic inches. In dimensionology, everybody has their own lane, so to speak, and it appears that dimensions are very stratified in how they arrange themselves. Mathematics has a different set of rules in that the value of one squared equals the value of one cubed. But once we add different units, these values become unequal. This is how we perceive length modified by an exponent over various dimensions. Here's another way to look at the same information which may help to clarify the reciprocal relationship between positive and negative dimensions. It may be useful to describe length as becoming inverted once we cross the pointal barrier. It's difficult to describe, but we are now dealing with the inverse of length, an unknown measurement that is something less than lineal, which we are now calling pointal. The connection between traditional measurement using squares and the dimensional measurement using the volume of balls happens at dimension one, with its direct ratio relationship of two times the radius equals length. Most of us would remember this ratio relationship as the diameter being twice the radius in a circle. Shown here are the other ratio relationships for each dimension, the significance being that the square shape in traditional measurement with a length of x will have a ratio relationship with the volume of a ball in dimensional measurement measurement with a radius of one half of x. This is an extremely useful tool. As stated earlier, there is a ratio relationship between the volume of a traditional object and the volume of a ball in each dimension. Looking at the positive dimensions, we can show a length of one modified by an exponent for each traditional measurement, and the corresponding volume of a ball with a radius of one half. We can also fill in the boundary values for each object along with the surface values for each sphere to show that the ratio relationships match for each dimension. Switching to the negative dimensions, we can start by filling in all the traditional measurement object values of one, followed by their corresponding values for dimensional measurement volume, and come up with these ratio relationships in negative dimensions. We can then fill in the values for the known surfaces of each of these spheres and apply the ratio relationships determined by the object volume calculations to arrive at these values for the boundaries of traditional objects in the negative dimensions. Contrary to our current understanding of a point being a location, not only should a point be thought of as an object, but consistent with every other object. Each point has a boundary of one dimension less, a Jeff, 
and that Jeff has a value of one. This is Jeff Zabo for Dimensionology. Up next, the case for conversion.